Welcome back, everybody. Um, you know, I had a great opportunity on June 27th to sit on an online live panel um, for career advice for people trying to break into the industry or even promote or, um, you know, whatever your aspirations are in water and wastewater. Um, I was on a panel with a, a grade five operator and a T5 D5 operator, and this is all California centric, but a really great conversation. It was hosted by Alec Mackey um, from the Water is Hiring uh, YouTube channel and Instagram. Go go check that out. Um, it'll be in the links below. Um, you can go check out our, our discussion. It looks like he's breaking up into different episodes, which I think was good. It was about an hour and a half. But, you know, since that discussion, there were a lot of great questions asked. And afterwards, I had a few direct messages on LinkedIn and on Reddit, um, people asking me this, a lot of the same questions that we were asked in that interview. And I was like, you know, I, I should probably do a video for my channel and get some of it, kind of put my own twist on it and give you some tips on what I think would stack the deck in your favor. Now, nothing's ever guaranteed. I can't guarantee you a job. I can't guarantee you an interview and I can't guarantee you a promotion. But what I can do is tell you what I as a hiring manager would look at, what I have looked at in the past and um, what I believe would be stacking the deck in your favor. Okay, so let me give you, let's, let's start with the, the three things we're gonna talk about is how to get the interview, how to ace the interview, and how to promote, okay? So so veteran operators, hang out for that number three. You can fast forward if you've already got a job, go, go find me talking about promotion, but I, I've, got, I've got a nugget in there for you. Um, but uh, the first one is how to even get your application selected. So um, first and foremost, uh, continue your job search, that's fine. But if you have not already, go get the education required for your OIT and pass the grade one. Now that is a very California specific piece of advice. In California, you cannot be an OIT without two things. One is the education credit, which you can get using the correspondence course from the Sacramento State University, Volume 1, Operations of Wastewater Treatment Plant, Volume 1. If you do the A, B, and C modules, you will get the education you need. So that's number one. Number two, to be an OIT is you need a chief plan operator to sign off on your application and your duty statement. You cannot be an OIT in California without a chief plan operator doing that. Now that could look at, that could be a volunteer position or a paid position, but either way, you need a chief plan operator to do that. Now I know in other states and countries, that's a little different. So just, just take that with a grain of salt. The rest of this information is really helpful, um, especially for, for how to write your resume and how to write your application. The other thing I would do um, for Californians, go past the grade one. If I am interviewing two applicants and one has passed their grade one and the other has not, and they're it's coming, gonna come between the two because they're both excellent candidates, I'm gonna go with the one that already has passed the grade one. My risk is this high because if I take on the other one, I'm not guaranteed they're gonna know how to pass a state exam, okay? Um, and if you don't pass, the test, you only have so much amount of time until your um, OIT is actually canceled and you cannot re-up your OIT until you pass the test. And so that's a problem because you could lose your job. You cannot work on a wastewater treatment plant without some kind of certificate, okay, in California. <laughs> so um, yeah, I would, I would highly recommend you at least get the credit for your education and uh, I would definitely, definitely advocate that you go past that grade one. Keep applying for jobs, but go go get that test out of the way so that you've got a feather in your cap that's going to give you a step up now the application process let's talk about what you might want to write on your application so with a small district like mine i'm pretty small there's like a couple people in the office we're like i don't know 10 square blocks or something it's not a very big district it's quite small um but um you know, I've worked for even a city, I had a three MGD plant up north and another two MGD plant um, not too far away that I that I worked at for a little bit. The public works directors and the public works supervisors and the chief plant operators were pretty accessible, even in those plants. Those are still small, but, but a little bigger, more proper cities. Um, I work for a special district, that's why we're kind of smaller, but um, you know, you can go in there and I would, I would definitely um, say hello, introduce yourself, tell them that you're interested in applying and hear the tips that they have for their particular application process, okay? Um, and then do maybe a volunteer shift here and there, get to know the players and and kinda, that's more of a schmooze your way in, but I think it's there's a lot of value there to go and actually meet the people. Now, let's get bigger. Let's talk BC Water Jobs, governmentjobs.com, um, all these other different websites that um, you're gonna actually submit an electronic application. Uh, East Bay Mud, uh, the, the bigger um, utilities, SFPUC, so what they have in the state of California, which I work for, and this is my experience, and this is, I'm gonna draw on that. 
and how I know those analysts pull applications. They are not water experts. They're not wastewater experts. They do not know how to read between the lines. So the hiring manager, you can get really technical with the hiring manager and you can talk about all the wonderful things you know how to do. But what I would advise against is a very convoluted, complicated, super technical application because the HR analyst is gonna look at it and go, I don't know what this guy's talking about or this gal's talking about. Focus on what we call the KSAs, knowledge, skills, abilities. When you look at the job description, you're gonna have a list of knowledge, what they expect you to know, a list of skills and a list of abilities. And I'm telling you, this is what the analysts do. They take the KSAs and they take your application and they do a keyword search. Government Jobs actually has an algorithm that does this, that even gets your application forwarded to an analyst to look at. So make sure those keywords fall into your application somewhere, okay? SCADA, chemical pumps, what, like, and a great example would be like, you need to know SCADA systems. Don't get into Win99 or Ignition or whatever the thing is that you use. Don't, don't go there. Um, you can maybe put a blurb, but don't get super technical. If they want to know how you know how to adjust chem feed rates, say, I know how to adjust chem feed rates. Don't get into the percent strength of your ferric chloride. It's, it's going to go way over that analyst's head. They're not going to know what you're talking about. Stick to the KSAs. You know this. That's your knowledge. You know you have knowledge of this. You have these skills and abilities, okay? And don't make it crazy obvious. I wouldn't cut and paste. <laughs> put it in your own words. Um, put your personality behind it. But just know that those analysts are not... They are also doing um, city clerk jobs. They're doing PD. They're doing fire. They're doing all the... They're analyzing applications for all sorts of different positions, not just water and wastewater. Okay, I beat that enough. Now, you've gotten select. You got the phone call. You're in and you're sitting on an interview panel. What is my number one piece of advice? Be yourself. Be a genuine person. For Now, I'm going to talk to uh, trainees and operator one level people. We do not expect you to know everything. We expect you to know some things, um, but we don't expect you to know everything. The number one thing that a hiring manager is looking for in an entry level person is teachability and the ability to work in a team setting. Um, are you a nice person? Um, are you short with me? Are you, um, are, are you asking questions about the job? Is this just going to be a job to you? Is this like, you know, these things. So you should go in with a list of questions ready for them because you're interviewing them too. Okay, oftentimes we're so desperate to get into the, and get our foot in the door, we forget that we're actually making sure that this is gonna be a good fit for us. And me as a manager, if I had you asking questions to me about, is this gonna be a good fit for you? That would, that would raise my eyebrows a little bit. I would, I would remember you because that's not so common. I, I haven't experienced it anyway. But um, just make sure that you're genuine. If you don't know the answer to something, do not BS your way through it. We can sniff it out so quick. Um, just, just, I'll, you know, I don't know that. And I'll give you an example. So um, my first plants were rotating biological contactors and trickling filters. I had a slew of activated sludge questions on my first plant that I worked in activated sludge. And I was already a grade two. They were asking me all these grade two, or these activated sludge questions, and I was answering them okay. And then they stopped and said, what is your experience with activated sludge? And I said, I don't have any, it's purely academic. All the answers I'm giving you are giving, I'm giving you from a baseline knowledge from studying, but I promise you I'm a, I'm a quick learner and I will, um, I'll, I'll, I'll get the hang of it. And I got the job. So, so you don't have to know everything. And I was already a grade two. So that went, and then, you know, the rest is history from there. I, I that was a, that was a great job. But, um, anyway, so that's my advice, um, for just kind of being yourself. Don't try to, you know, BS your way through questions. And the other thing I would say is, um, make sure that you do a little study up on that plant. So, you've taken the state exam, you've taken the civil service or an aptitude test or a civil service exam or whatever it is. All those aptitude tests and civil service exams are kind of, this, they're either lightweight versions of the state exam or they're harder versions. I've had both. Sometimes they give you a conversion sheet for math, sometimes they don't. It's just whatever they kind of come up with. It's just kind of going to see where you're at. And um, the Next step from that is um, actually, uh, they're gonna ask you questions about their plant. So um, my suggestion is you get that tour and if you can't get a tour, actually a lot of water districts will brag about their plant to show everybody how wonderful their processes are. You can glean a lot of information off the website or maybe a YouTube video that the, that the um, district did to kind of show a plant expansion they did. And you can go in and actually um, get a little bit of information about that plant's processes and read up on those processes. Because if you do have technical questions, they're gonna be about what that plant does. 
If that is a extended aeration plant with um, you know, membrane bioreactor, they will not be asking you about ponds. Why would they ask you about a pond? They're going to be asking you about like things that they're dealing with. Okay. And what would actually something that blew me away once on an interview was somebody actually knew like the whole, I, this is when I worked for state parks, knew more about the park than I did. He never worked there before. He had all this history memorized and he ended up getting the job. Um, and he was a really skilled worker. Um, and the third thing is make sure you dress for um, professionalism, business casual at the minimum. Um, I like if, you know, kind of a jacket and um, if I do it for an entry level position, I would do like a jacket, no tie, slacks. If I was going for a supervisory position, I would certainly be wearing a tie. I've had people disagree with me on the dress code thing. That's fine. If you disagree with me, that's, that's great. Um, I just, for me, I would like to see people in business casual and I mostly kind of stuck to the guy dress code. Women, you know your uh, professional dress and professional attire better than I do. Um, it's just kind of a, you know it when you see it. And uh, let's make sure that we are um, uh, putting our best foot forward. I've had people, when I worked for uh, a, a city of Mount Shasta, we were hiring um, you know, streets guys and water guys, and I had people come in with dirty clothes, <laughs> holes in their pants. They didn't get hired. Like, it's like, I don't know what to say, man. Like, you don't have to wear a three-piece suit, but look professional, okay? And um, lastly, I wanna give a little advice to those who wanna promote. So all of you, say, say you, you got your job interview, you landed that job, you're super excited, and you have aspirations to promote one day. Never ever forget, you have, are always interviewing for your next position, always. So you have a little bit of an advantage that if you're coming in for an operator one job or an OIT job, nobody knows you yet. So you actually, that's actually not a bad thing um, because the, you have a blank slate. But by the time you go to uh, promote or go for supervisory jobs, we know your habits, we know the good ones and the bad ones. We know um, that we can count on you or we know we don't can't count on you, you know, that kind of stuff. So just remember, you are always interviewing for your next position. Even if you don't think you'll ever want that position, you may change your mind. Always best foot forward. Um, don't be a doormat by any means. I'm not saying like, you know, just get worked over um, by your district for the sake of a promotion. Not at all. Um, but just know that um, your attitude goes a very long way. How you treat people goes a very long way. And uh, we can always teach you skill. We cannot teach you to be a kind person. We cannot teach you how to work cohesively in a team. And we cannot teach you how to solve problems that pop up. And when you work with groups of people, problems pop up. So just be ready to um, show in all of these interviews, be able to show whether you're promoting or breaking in, that you can be ready with a story that you have um, diffused a situation with a hard to get along with person that you are inherently easy to get along with. You are a team player that um, has potential leadership skill. Okay. So those are my suggestions for getting in, getting an interview and promoting. If you have anything to add, please put it in the comments below. If you disagree with what I said, please let me know. Any questions at all, please comment. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in my live stream, probably on July 15th at 2.30 PM Pacific time. Uh, join me please. Uh, um, and it's going to be going for about 30 minutes. We'll do a little QA and uh, we'll see you then. Until next time, have a great day.